So hello and welcome to another uh, digital type of tutorial and this one I'm going to be just going through a pipeline of doing this uh, shot here. So in a studio we have a set that needs extending. Um, we've got some rubbish up here where there's bits missing and uh, we've got a piece of wall, the end of the wall missing here which we'd like to put on and also the uh, shadows cast on the background here because of the lack of space we had several sets in there so we couldn't get far enough away from the uh, the, the blue background to not cast these shadows so a normal key a chroma keying will be a little bit difficult because of those shadows and differences in the color so because the camera is locked off and very stable it doesn't move at all we can do it slightly differently now I've just color balanced it and got it ready we're going to be uh, putting a background in and then here's my uh, rough out I basically have got a model in the background here put it into a logical perspective and then sky which I have also animated so that it will uh, move across the sky a little bit that's my basic uh, sketch as it were so I will then turn off the uh, the keying and then render out a full image sequence in PNG so that I can it's lossless so you won't lose any quality there and then I'm going to go to GIMP which is a free program there and work on it uh, now instead of doing the chroma keying because I have the two different keys here a little bit of detail that I would have to mask or do something about anyway plus those variations in color what I'm going to do is make a mask that I can use in Blender getting a transparent background and here I can now get a blue um, zoom in a little bit for example around these leaves here and get my cutting tool ma and mask it out put a bit of feathering on maybe 10 or 5 pixels here and then I can start to get a slightly feathered thing so it won't it's about the same blurriness as the edges of the um, image itself and so I'm going to use the fill tool to give me a blue which is going to be uh, no red no green and 100, uh, 255 or full blue to give me that uh, blue here and just take some time it's actually a little bit quicker to mask it out like this rather than mess around fixing up a, a, a rustly or a horrible difficult key so I'm going to do that over the whole thing and I have one already done and here it is so I turn else, everything else off and you can see that's the mask and then I'm going to file export that export it to a, call it uh, give it a name and call it mask in this case cancel out of that then when I go into Blender, doesn't matter your version, it's uh, pretty good. This one's 2.79 getting old now, but it works fine. So I'm going to go to the movie clip editor and open up the uh, the the shot that I have rendered the image sequence out in 647, 648 frames. 648 uh, go to the other end just to make sure I've got that right advance the frame good I've got the uh, frame numbers right move to somewhere in there now I can also import uh, the background which I also uh, made a, a rendered out an image sequence and here it is so I've got those two videos open I can now go to my node editor turn on the uh, the middle button here use nodes and backdrop so that I have that select my render layers and get rid of that we don't need that I'm going to add in the add button an input of a movie clip which is what we're going to be looking at first I can go shift D or add another just add another movie clip one and select the background so we have the background and the other clip here in add output a viewer so I can see it in that viewport 
and get the video into here then the V key to zoom out a bit so I can see it add an input uh, color mix node so that I plonk that on top activate the uh, alpha and I'm going to put that on top just to see that is what we have got in our movie right that's all good so far now I'm going to add an input of an image also Let me put that up there a bit and in that image I'm going to open up the mask that we had navigate to it and there is our mask open that mask and I'm going to take the alpha of that mask to factor that in and you can see it is now uh, use the alpha channel of that mask as the mask and cut it out if I did it the opposite way around I can see now I have my background if it was in the opposite I could put an invert node there just to reverse the the mask but at the moment it's working fine so now I want to add the background on top of that and there we have the background in because it's masked I now won't have any rustling through poor keying around the leaves and the green that's very close to the blue and along the edges um, it's now going to be a very stable key with this guy moving so that's now we need to fix the edge of that wall now so what we're going to do hook in my composite which is my output here in this window here I'm going to uh, convert that into a node editor as well close that one open that a bit more pull it down now I activate that as well use nodes backdrop so I basically have a copy of this screen in this screen V out a bit and view backdrop move I can move it to where I'm looking going back to GIMP again here I can open this up here I'm going to make a transparent layer so that I can then I go to the layer I want to uh, select and then select a piece of wall control C and then go to the layer I want to put it on which is this transparent one control V and there I have my piece of wall I can now shift it to here and then use the perspective tool here to then put some perspective of that into that wall like that transform it and there we have a transparent piece I mean a transformed piece don't need it quite as wide so there we are I can then copy that paste it again and then anchor that of course um, that edge there because it is so sharp I can feather the edges give it some feathering just trim off a bit of that edge with tra uh, with that feathering then shift it across so now it's not quite so sharp on that edge now I have you can repeat that for the bottom piece here and I have done that and also I have adjusted the colors uh, brightness and contrast put the brightness down okayed it and that has darkened it as if it's in shadow because the lights coming from this direction so it's going to be in shadow then down the bottom here I have also used the burn tool burn with half opacity more or less and up the size of that so that I can then just darken that down because it's going to be darker down towards the ground turn off that one there and export that one file export to calling it um, a patch and there we have the patch so now when I go to back into blender we can now copy that mix node just shift D or import or we'll bring another one in through the menus connect it up and there we have um, it in the background with white on top so I can add input image and get an image node 
and then navigate to that patch and get it put it on top and it should appear here now you notice that Sir Pigwig is now uh, behind that piece of wall so we now need to laboriously do a mask go out to the movie clip editor select the video with Pigwig in it zoom in with the scroll button turn the tracking button into a mask button uh, mode and then with control click I can now make a, a mask Alt C to close that A to deselect and A to select all shift and drag out to put some feathering on that edge there any one that I want to change in the mode set the hand select it and set the the type and this one's going to be a a line single so that I can get curvature and then a solid point there at his hair and now we can turn on this button below to activate animating I'm going to drag down this top window and turn it into a dope sheet so I can monitor it select dope sheet then down to mask to give me the masks and here is the mask if I move a point it will generate a keyframe now if I go shift up arrow key it will advance 10 frames and then I can shift the whole thing now this is about the quickest way I have found to do an animated mask let's go back to this uh, situation over here drag it down a bit more zoom out uh, if I now want to mask this so on the mixer node here I have a factor button so I can add input mask select the mask that we're just doing and plug it into the factor and you'll notice it is um, gone funny because it's not the right size so down in my parameters I need to put it up to 100% size and I'll adjust the frame rate also so now it's the right size it's now cut the opposite out so I'm going to have to now put an add input no, uh, color invert to swap that round and now it's the opposite it is now on there now there is a little piece missing that is not cut out of the um, of that mask and so we can take that same mask and duplicate it uh, shift D and we can add or, ta or take away that from the mask we can do that by make this a bit bigger uh, going add converter math and put a math node in there so that I can now add and clamp it of course so that it doesn't um, do that strange coloring now I can add that mask to that and you'll find it will, has done the opposite so I can subtract it from that and now that mask uh, the mask of Pigwig's head is now subtracted from the mask alpha channel of the mask image so now that's fixed that and it has that mask inverted to cut the wall so now I can with this window open of the node editor I can work in the other window uh, on the animation by going skipping 10 forward that was again shift up uh, arrow key and you can see the result in that window updating now this is about the quickest way of doing the animation that I can think of or that I have 
spent thousands of hours doing. You sh skip forward 10, 10 frames. Do You take a little while to make sure you get it roughly right, but between the 10 frames, it will start to animate and you'll see that it's not quite as precise but from there you can go back with the back arrow key or forward arrow key one two three four five frames and then make an adjustment the finer adjustments then shift a down or up arrow key to jump forward or backwards 10 frames and then you will find that you only have to make minor adjustments to that every five frames and you'll find that the adjustment is not as large as with the 10 frames and it reflects over here in the other frame then once as a final pass having done the 10 frames and then the 5 frames you can use the forward and back arrow keys to then march through from the beginning of your key one at a time and just make extremely minor adjustments just click through and that's about the quickest method that I have seen because you will sometimes get little surprises on the single frames where there's a sudden change of movement but you'll find that where there is very little movement you will get very little adjusting have to be done in fact sometimes none for big stretches of time where the character is fairly static like there so you now have an animated mask and then reflect it over here then when you are done the entire animating of that mask so that you now have that wall piece and the background and everything you could do some spill light and other little things but this tutorial we won't cover those so now I'm going to convert this back into a, the UV image editor push the or click the render button just to give me that picture there is the final output image that goes into that um, into that final composite node here and now I can monitor the output there and now I can render it out so let us see um, by setting um, I won't need a RGB just RGB instead of RGB with an alpha channel um, select where I'm going to do my um, my sequence to render to render that out and you're ready to go back in your project here so that now once I'm done here I can import the sequences and bring it in now just as an extra touch I've decided to go back into GIMP and make some shadows uh, I select over here in the paintbrush tool one that has sort of spots and stuff make it larger much larger with a black color and more or less let's turn on this and put a transparent and if you to make a dappled light type of thing here uh, where the tree might be then I'm going to apply a blur a Gaussian blur filter of around about 40 or 50 pixels I suppose blur all that and then I can also make it slightly more transparent then take my loop cutting tool and cut the extra bits off that we don't need Turn everything else off and export that to one called uh, Shadow. Then back in the editing program, 
I can open that up and put that on top. I could do this in Blender as well, just incorporate it. And it's a little bit strong, so I'll reduce the opacity somewhat until it looks nice. And then I can render that out. And there we have it with some shadows, the walls fixed, and the background all done.